Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Today's video is going to be another tutorial on WordPress development and specifically, I'm going to be showing you how you can work with the single most important function in all of WordPress, which is the almighty WordPress loop. If you don't know what it is, the WordPress loop is what's responsible for displaying content on your pages, your posts, your custom post types, and so on. So working with the WordPress loop, I'm going to show you how you can build this custom page here called articles. Now, what exactly are you looking at? We have a page that has three posts been displayed. Each post has its featured image. It has a title and an excerpt, but then down here, we actually have a custom post type of country. Let me show you real quick. I have the custom post type here called countries. We have six of them. Now, these countries also have their own custom taxonomy, just like you have categories for posts. For our countries, we have continents. So this is a custom taxonomy. We have two of them, Europe and South America. And then each of these countries also have two custom fields, which are capital and population. So using the WordPress loop, we're going to build this page that will display the flag or the featured image for each country, the title of each country, the accept for each country, and then also the two custom fields of capital and population. And we're going to do all of this by customizing the WordPress loop. So for a start, I'll show you how you can use the WordPress loop to display basic content for your posts. And then I'll show you how you can use the loop to display content from specific categories or specific posts from specific categories. And then I'll take it a, a notch further by showing you how you can display content from your custom post types. And I guarantee you that by the end of today's tutorial, you would have learned enough about the WordPress loop to be able to display any kind of content you want on any page, whether it's content for your posts, your custom post types, your custom fields, working with custom taxonomies, you will learn everything that you need to know about the WordPress loop today. Now, let me just give you, I'll just inform you about something real quick. Today's tutorial is going to cover the actual uh, displaying of the content. Okay, so all we're concerned about in today's video is displaying the actual content for our posts and then our custom post type of country. I'm going to make a separate video, which I'll publish either tomorrow or the day after that will focus more on design. So we're going to take this page right now and we're going to make it look more pleasing. We'll make the titles clickable. We'll also make sure that for the countries, you have the title being displayed under the featured image, the population and the capitals of each country will have their own separate lines. We're going to make this page look a lot more presentable than what it currently is. So be on the lookout for that video today. We're just going to focus on displaying content on this page using the almighty WordPress loop. So today's video is going to be perfect for you if you are an aspiring WordPress developer or maybe you are a WordPress developer, but you want to learn how to work with the WordPress loop, how to customize it to display any kind of content that you want. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Okay, so before we begin the tutorial officially, there are a few things that you need to put in place. First of all, you need to have an FTP account and you need to have FTP access to your WordPress theme files. If you don't know how to create yourself or create for yourself an FTP account, I do have a tutorial covering that. Check the link in the description box below. And then since we're going to be working with actual content, you do need to have some content in place on your website already. In my case, I have nine different posts in here. You can see the titles. And I also have three different categories of Asia, Europe, and South America. And then each post has some content in it. You can use Lorem Ipsum text like I did right here. You can see I've got two paragraphs of text. I have the category of Asia selected and then I have the featured image as well. So please go ahead and create yourself these posts. You don't have to go with nine posts. I think five should be enough. Five posts should be enough, maybe even four. But make sure that you have at least two different categories because we're going to be working with the WordPress loop to display posts from different categories. So have at least two categories. And then since we're going to be working with custom post types, I have created a custom post type of countries. As you can see, I have six of them. You don't need to go with all six. Three, four would be enough, but make sure you have at least two continents. I've created a custom taxonomy called continents. You can see right here under countries, we have continents and I've got two of them, Europe and South America. So just like with your posts, make sure you have at least two different continents with some countries in them. And then for each country, I have also created two custom fields of capital and population. So let me show you an example. I have Spain right here. So Spain has the title of Spain. It has the flag and then it has some content. Again, you can use the Ipsum. And then down here, you can see we have the capital Madrid. 
and then the population of 46.94. So please, these are the things that you need to have in place before you can begin the tutorial. And then finally, we will be working with the WordPress 2021 theme. You could use a different theme, but I would recommend, you know, just to avoid any confusion, just stick with the 20, 20, 2021 theme. And then you can also create a page called uh, articles. You can name the page, maybe even blog, or it doesn't necessarily have to be articles, but just, just name it articles. I think it's best that way. So once you have all of this in place, then you can begin to uh, take the tutorial. Again, if you don't know how to create an FTP account, or you don't know how to create uh, custom fields or custom post types, I have tutorials covering all of that. Check the links in the box below for more information. So once you have all of this in place, then you can begin the tutorial and I'll see you in the tutorial right now. Alrighty, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our page template that we're going to use to display our content using the WordPress loop. Now right here, I have connected via FTP to my website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way into the uh, 2021 WordPress theme folder. So I'm going to go into public HTML, WP content, go to the themes folder. And now I'm going to open up 2021. And what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to right click up here where we have the folder and I'm going to say create new file. And I'm going to call this one page dash articles. Okay. So I'm naming my template page articles and I'm going to call this one dot PHP. All right, let's go ahead and now click OK. All righty, so right here you can see right now we do have our empty file. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And now what we need to do is we need to name the template file itself. So I'm going to open up my code right here, PHP, and then I'm going to add our comment. So I'm going to say forward slash and then the asterisks to indicate a comment. And I'm going to say template name and then colon. And then we can call this one articles. Okay. So that's going to be our template name. Let me go ahead now and close our comment. And I'm going to go ahead now and close the PHP code. Let's save this. And okay, so how do we know if it's actually working? I'm going to go ahead now to open up the articles page right here. So let's go ahead now and edit. And then right here, you should see on the template, you should now see our articles template right there. So I'm going to go ahead now, choose articles as a template, go ahead now and update. And of course, if we view the page, well, <laughs> we're not going to get anything because it is completely blank, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this back in here and let's quickly add some code. Let's add the header. So I'm going to say PHP get underscore header. If you're not familiar with this function, it basically pulls in the header.php file, which will display contents of our header. So things like the logo, uh, the main menu and so on. And then let's also add down here the footer as well. PHP get underscore footer. And then let's close that up. Let's go ahead and now save and check this out. If I go back in here and refresh the page, now you can see we've pulled in the header, which has basically the logo, no menu yet, but down here, you can see we have the footer uh, being displayed. So we are doing pretty well. Okay. Now, let me introduce you to the almighty loop. I'm going to go ahead and grab just some code right here on my order screen. Let me now come in here and paste that code. Okay. What you're looking at right here is the most basic loop that you will ever find. All right. I'm going to take this step by step. So we have the opening PHP code in here and it says if have posts. So basically the loop is asking WordPress that, Hey, WordPress, do you have posts to display? So WordPress naturally is going to say, yeah, I have posts to display. So now the loop is saying, okay, while you have posts to display, 
I am going to display certain data about those posts. That's basically what these, the post is. Let me take that again. First of all, WordPress checks to see if, or rather the loop checks to see if we have posts. Yes, we have posts. And then while, or as long as we continue to have posts, we're going to display some content about those posts. You can see this, the post right here is what we need to say that, okay, we want to display this content about each post. Okay. Now check this out. I'm going to go in here right now and I'm going to add some code to display certain kinds of data. The first one here is going to be the most popular, which is the underscore title. And now we'll have a brackets, semicolon. Okay. Next, let's also add the featured image. You know, our post, they all have featured images. So the tag to display that is going to be the underscore post underscore thumbnail. Okay. And now semicolon. And there it is. So to recap, the loop right now says, hey, if we have posts, and as long as we continue to have posts, display these two bits of information about each post. So right now we're going to display the title and then the post thumbnail of our posts. I'm going to go ahead now and save this, but you will see what will now happen. If I go back in here and I refresh this page, nothing is happening. Well, something did happen. It displayed articles, which is actually the title of our page. Remember, we named our page articles, but it's not supposed to display the title of, of our page, right? It's supposed to display the title of our posts and then also the post thumbnail, the featured images. Why isn't it working? Here's the thing. Because this is a custom page template we've created, WordPress doesn't really know that, hey, we want to display this content for our posts. We need to tell WordPress explicitly that, hey, when we run this loop, we want you to display this content of our posts. Now, check this out. If I open up index.php, index.php is a traditional WordPress theme file. WordPress knows about index.php. This is a standard WordPress file. All right. In fact, you can watch my previous video on uh, WordPress template hierarchy to really understand the importance of index.php. Whatever code you display in here, WordPress will recognize it instantly. Now check this out. Okay. I'm going to go ahead now and cut all these off. Let me just go ahead and uh, paste that in a separate file. I'm going to go back in here. I am going to grab this code. Notice that I didn't grab the template name because we're not changing this to a template. Okay. It's going to be the same index.php file, but I'm going to paste this right now and I'm going to go ahead now and save this. Note that we still haven't explicitly stated that we want to display this content of posts, but because it's now inside of the index.php, which WordPress already knows to be a file that's used for displaying our content for our posts, check this out. I'm going to go back in here. And now if I go to the home page, look at that. Now we have the title and of course we have the featured image. We have title featured image. We have title featured image still loading. These are very, very big images as you can see, but you can see right now title featured image, title featured image and so on and so forth. So what I'm trying to show you in here is that because index.php is a file that comes with WordPress themes by default, WordPress knows we don't, we don't have to state that, Hey, we want to display this content for our post. So WordPress already knows, but because in here page articles, this article, this page template is a custom template that we have created. We need to tell WordPress that, Hey, we want you to display the content for our posts. So how do we do that? Well, before I answer that question, I'm just go back and grab this code right here. Once again, make sure that my index.php file is the same as before. Let me paste that in there, save. And just to confirm, let me go back in here, refresh the page. 
Okay, good. We are back to normal. But now, how do we tell WordPress to display the featured image as well as the title of our posts on our custom page template file? What we need to do is to create something known as an array. And inside of that array, we're going to say, hey, we want to work with our posts. We want to work with posts that have been published. And then we can even indicate the number of posts we want to display in our loop. So check this out. I'm going to come up here. Let's create some space. And now in here, I'm going to create this variable called args, A-R-G-S. You could use a different name for your variable, but args is very, very popular. So I'm going to use args and I'm going to say equals. And now we're going to open up our array. Okay. Let's add brackets. Let's create some space. And now inside of this array, think of an array as like a collection of different kinds of parameters and their values. Okay. So the first parameter in our array right here is going to be known as the post type. So this is where we're going to tell WordPress that, Hey, we're working with posts. So I'm going to say equals and then an arrow right there. And now the value in quotes again is going to be post. If I wanted to work with the custom post type of countries, right? This is where I would now say country as opposed to post. If I wanted to work with my pages, I would say page and so on. So this is where we indicate that, Hey, we're working with our WordPress posts. Now I'm going to add a comma at the end in here. Let's add another parameter. In this case right now, what kind of posts is it posts that have been published? Posts that are in draft mode, posts that are pending and so on. So the parameter for that one is going to be called the post uh, status. Okay. Post status. And of course the value here is going to be publish. So publish. Okay. And then let's add one more parameter in here. And that's going to be the number of posts we're going to work with. So in here is going to say posts underscore per page. And now the value is going to be, let's go with three. Okay. And there it is. We've created our way. Let me add a semicolon in here. Be very, very careful about all your semicolons and so on. Also, please pay attention in here. You will notice that, that at the end of the values of our variables or parameters in here, we do have a comma. So I have a comma in here, a comma in here, although right down here at the very end, the last parameter in here, there is no comma. So you don't need to add a comma for your final parameter. Okay. So just take note of that. Okay. So we've created our way right now. We've said we're going to work with our WordPress posts, posts that have been published, and then we're going to work with three posts in our loop, right? But we're not done right now. We need to do something. I'm going to introduce you to a particular function in here called WP query. And right here, you can see it says there are two main scenarios. You might want to use this function. The second right here is during the loop. WP query provides numerous functions for common tasks within the loop. To begin with half post, which calls WP query half posts is called to see if there are any posts to show. So basically right now we've created our array for the posts, but now we need to say that, Hey, WordPress loop use this array. So how do we do that? I'm going to come in here. Okay. I'm going to create a new variable and I'll call this one loop. You can name this variable anything. You can call it first loop post loop and so on, but I'm just going to say loop. And now this variable, I'm going to say equals. And now I'm going to say new because it's a new query WP underscore query. And now inside, can you guess what we're going to pass in here? Yes. We're going to pass in our args. That's basically what we have done right there. And of course, I am going to add my semicolon right there and there it is. So to give you a quick recap, we first of all created our array that has three parameters. 
that we said, hey, we're working with posts that have been published and we're going to be working with three posts in total. And now I introduce this function called WP Query past this array of args inside of it. But then to make things smoother for us and easier for us to work with, I then passed everything into another variable called loop. Now for the final piece of magic, I'm going to come in here right now and say, where you say where you have the if, we're going to change this one to now the dollar sign and then loop. So we're basically replacing the default loop with now our own custom loop. So by saying if the loop has posts and while loop has posts, loop the post. And there it is. Let me add my dollar sign right here. Arrow and there you go. That is basically what we have done in here. Hope you didn't find that confusing. I'm going to go ahead now, save this and let us see what we have. I'm going to remove this. Let's go ahead now, refresh the page. And there you go. We have the very first post in here, visiting the Buddhist temple. We have the title, the featured image, and then we have the next post, four days in St. Petersburg. We have the image and then last we have the rainbow mountain with the image so you can see right now it is working and just to prove to you that it's really working i'm going to come in here change three to five okay let's go ahead now save that okay and i don't know if this okay it's saving right now sometimes when you're working with ftp software it may time out but i think mine has saved so we've changed that to five i'm going to come back in here to refresh the page Okay, and let's see what we have. So now we have one, two, three, four, and five. There it is. Let us make one more change. I'm going to bring this back in here. And instead of working with the post type of post, how about we change it to the one for country? Check this out. I'm going to remove this and say country. Okay. I'm going to go ahead now, save this. I've changed the post type from post to country. Save that. And now let me come back in here, refresh the page. And there you go. Now you can see I've got Spain, I've got Germany, I have Colombia, I have Argentina. And the Russian flag isn't loading just yet, but I do apologize. It's actually my internet uh, speed <laughs> that seems to have got. Okay, so there you have the Russian flag now showing up as well. So I do apologize for the slow internet speed, but you can see right now that it is working. We just came in here and said, hey, the post I want to walk with right now is going to be country as opposed to post. So let me just go back in here and now change country back to post. But I'm going to add one more parameter. In this case right now, we could also stress the category of the post that we want to work with and not just post from any category, but we're going to choose a specific category. So to do that, I'm going to come in here right now, add a comma, right? Because it's no longer the last one. I'm going to come in right now and add the parameter for the post category. And that is going to be category underscore name. Okay, so now we're stressing the name of the category. And I'm going to go ahead and give the category of Asia. Okay. And there it is. I'm actually going to put this in quotes as well. Okay, so now we're saying choose post five posts from the category of Asia. I'm going to go ahead now to save this. And let us see if this would work. So I'm going to drag this away and now let's refresh the page and uh oh, we got ourselves an error. Oops. Let me bring this back right here. And oh, okay. <laughs> you can see what I did. I added a semicolon right here at the end of Asia. Oh my gosh. After I just said that for the very last parameter, you don't need to add a comma. Ah, I'm an idiot. Let me go back, save this again. <laughs> Do apologize for that. Drag this away, refresh. And there you go. All right. So we have got the first one from Asia. And now you can see the second article from Asia as well. Doi Ethanon Review. And then last but not least, visiting, I visited Chiang Rai 
as the third post from Asia. To prove this to you, I'm going to go ahead to the back end right now and just confirm that these three articles are indeed the articles from the category of Asia. So right here, let's go to all posts and let's see what we have. And there it is. So you can see visiting the Buddhist temple is Asia. Doi Ithanon Review is Asia, and of course, I Vista Chiang Rai is Asia as well. So we've successfully been able to pass a fourth parameter that chooses the posts from the category of Asia. Now, at this point, I want to answer a question that you may have, and that is, what if we wanted to display articles from more than one category? So what if in this case right now, instead of just Asia, I also wanted to display posts from, let's say, Europe as well. All you need to do is to come right here where you have Asia, add your comma, and then simply add the name of the next category. And there it is. So if I go ahead now and save this, and I go back in here and I refresh my page, now you will see I have articles from Europe now as well. You can see four days in St. Petersburg, that's in Russia. You've got the one in Turkey, now the one in Glasgow, Scotland, and so on. So that's basically all you would need to do. Another question I might have here is what if you wanted to display a post or posts that belong to more than one category? So maybe you wanted to display posts that belong to both Asia and Europe. Okay, all you need to do is you come right here, remove that comma, and then simply add the plus sign. So this is basically you saying only show posts or show posts that only belong to both the Asia and Europe category. And that's how uh, you'll be able to do that. Okay, we're gonna move on now to create our second custom query. So you can see right now I've gone back to, I've reverted back to the original loop where we display three posts from uh, different categories, right? But this is for posts. Now we're going to display content from our custom post type of country. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to grab everything in here, grab all this code. Let's copy that, come right here, and now paste it all over again. And what we're going to do right now is just to change post right here to country. Okay. And now here, let's make a change to the variable of loops. So I'm going to call this one second underscore loop. Okay, just to give it a different name from the first one that we created in here. So I'm going to come in here and call this one second underscore loop. And then right here, I'll call it second underscore loop as well. Now check this out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead now and save this. All right, so we've got two queries right now on our page. Let me drag this away. Let's refresh the page. And what do we have now? Okay, you can see we've got the very first post from a regular post, post, post. And then down here, you can now see that we have our country, our custom post type, Spain, Germany, and Russia. Now, right here, you might think, okay, we've done a good job. Now we're displaying a second query. However, there is one thing you need to do whenever you have more than one custom query on your page. This is good WordPress developer uh, coding, okay? There is a particular function I'm going to introduce you to, and that function is the one right here. It's called the WP Reset Query. And it says it destroys the previous query and sets up a new query. This should be used after query post and before another query post. This will remove obscure bugs that occur when previous WP query object is not destroyed properly before another one is set up. So the thing is, right here, because we already created a custom query where we said, okay, we're going to display our posts that have been published. Before you create another query, you need to reset the query back to its default, back to its default state, and then you can introduce a second query. You can see right now that the code still works, but it is good practice to avoid any possible bugs to use the function. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to grab the code, come right here where you have the end if, and then right here, I'm going to paste that all important WP underscore reset underscore query code. I'm going to go ahead now. Let me add my semicolon right there. 
I'm going to go ahead now, save this. And now let's go back in here. Let me do a hard refresh of the page just to make sure nothing got broken. So we have our first post, second post, third post, and now we have our three countries right there, Spain, Germany, and Russia. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, I'm going to bring this back in here, and let me ask you a question, okay? What if, just like previously, what if we wanted to display our custom post types from a different taxonomy? In this case right now, I've got country, right? But then don't forget that I already created a custom taxonomy of continent. Uh, let me show you, let me drag the page right here. So you can see on the countries we have the custom taxonomy of continents and then inside we have Europe and South America. So what if going back to our code, we only wanted to display countries from the continent of South America. How are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to come back down here. I'm going to add a comma. And now let me introduce you to the new parameter called the tax underscore query. This is the parameter for pulling content from a particular taxonomy. So right now, I'm going to come in here and let's see if this works. I'm going to come in here and say in quotes, south and then dash America. Again, let me just drag this page right here and show you. We're using the slug. So you can see the slug right here. It's South Dash America. So let's see if this would work. Let me remove that. Come right here. Make sure the code works. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead now and save this. Okay. Let's see if this would work. I'm going to come right here. I'm going to refresh the page. And what do we have? We have, nope, we have nothing. I mean, we still have our countries, but these are from Europe. These are not from South America. So what's going on in here? So the thing is, because we've created a custom taxonomy of continents, we haven't necessarily told WordPress that, hey, pull South America, pull the category of South America from the custom taxonomy of continent. So right now, WordPress doesn't know where to find South America. It's like, where is South America? Is it, a, is it under a custom taxonomy? Okay, what is the name of that custom taxonomy? WordPress does not know. So what we need to do is to create another array and then tell WordPress that, hey, in this array, we have the custom taxonomy of continent, and then we have the category or the custom taxonomy category of South America. So how do we do that? What we're going to do is right here, I'm going to remove South America and I'm going to open up an array again. All right. And now let's open up our brackets for the array. Let's create a new line. And then in here, we're going to pass in another array again. It's not complicated, don't get confused. We're simply passing a separate array inside of our first array. So now in here, this is the array that's now going to hold the actual parameters. And the first parameter in here is going to be taxonomy, okay? And now we're going to stress the name of the taxonomy, which is continent, okay, continent. Let's add a comma. Next right now is we're going to have to tell WordPress how to find the actual name or the ID of that taxonomy. In this case right now, the parameter is called field. Okay. And now what field are we trying to target in here? It's going to be the field of the slug. So I'm going to come in here right now and say slug because remember right here we're using the slug to identify which particular category we want to display so we're using the, the, the slug right here so that's why i've said slug and now let's add another comma and then finally this is now where we can 
tell the name of the category and the parameter for that is going to be terms. Okay, and now so I'm going to add that one. And now here we can now say South Dash America. Let me go ahead now and first of all, make sure that all the brackets are closed. So we've closed the first one in here, but then the second one right here. Okay, the second one right here has not been closed, you can see. So we need to add another closing bracket right here. And there you go. So this one closes this one. This one closes this one up here. And then this one closes the one up here. Okay, let's go ahead and now save this. And now let's try to refresh the page and see what we have. And there you go. Now you can see we've got our countries of Argentina, Colombia, and Brazil been displayed under the custom taxonomy of South America. So just to give you a recap again, right here, we're using the function tax query. And now we're going to tell WordPress the name of the custom taxonomy, and then the category under that custom taxonomy, and then also how to identify that category. So what we did right here was created an array pass another array inside of it and say the taxonomy right here is continent. The field is slug. We could also use ID as well for the field. And then the terms South America, right? Okay, now let me ask you another question. What if we wanted to display countries from more than one category, just like we had with the post where we displayed from both Europe and um, Asia? What if we also wanted to display from South America and Europe? How are we going to do that? It's not going to work if you come in here right now and you say, okay, I'm just going to add a comma right here and then say Europe. All right, let's try that one. Let's see. I'm going to save this and see if that would work. Let's bring back the, this one right here. Let's refresh the page. And you can see it does not work at all. In fact, nothing shows up anymore. This is not going to work when you're dealing with a custom taxonomy. So what we need to do now would be to simply add an array where we have our terms because now we're dealing with more than one custom taxonomy. So right here, I'm going to say array and then we can add the brackets and then the closing bracket for the array. And then for the actual individual categories, we're going to cover them in quotes. And there it is. So terms, array, and then in brackets, you'll have your categories covered in quotes. Let me go ahead now, save this. And make sure that is saved. Okay, I'm going to go back in here. Let's refresh the page. And actually, I forgot to do one thing. I'm sorry. Because we're displaying uh, well, more countries now, we're going to change the post per page from three. And let's go all the way to five. Okay, so let's make it five. Let's save it. And uh, let me drag this away, come back in here, refresh. And now you can see we, now we have our uh, three countries from Europe and then two from South America, which are Argentina and Colombia. So this is exactly how you would display your custom post types from multiple uh, custom taxonomies. Let me now show you how to display the value that we have in the custom fields I created. And just to remind you right here, you can say I created two custom fields, one called capital, the other one called population for each country. So let me show you how to display the information in them. Before we do that, let us display the excerpt for our posts and countries. So up here where we have the very first loop for our posts, I'm just going to go ahead and display the underscore excerpt. So this will display the excerpt of our posts. And what I want to do right here is to actually grab the thumbnail and display that one first. So basically the structure would be the featured image, the title, and then the excerpt. All right, I'm going to do the exact same thing down here as well for the loop for our countries. I'm going to move the post thumbnail and just paste it just above the title. And now let's go ahead to display the excerpt as well. Okay, the excerpt, and there it is. And now for our custom fields, all you need to do is just say the underscore field, 
and then in brackets now add the name of the field and the first one here as you can see is capital you can see capital is the name so i'm gonna go ahead now and just type in capital in here capital and then next is going to be the population field and now right here i'm gonna say population and there it is let's go ahead now and save this and let's see how this would look like i'm gonna remove this let's refresh our page right here and there it is so now we have the featured image appearing first we have the title and now we have the excerpt for the very first post and then same goes for the second post you have the third post and now right here you can see that we do have the featured image for Spain and then we have the title called Spain and then we have the excerpt and then down here I know this looks very very rough don't worry we're gonna fix it right here you can see the capital of Spain is Madrid and then you can see the population is 46.94 it's supposed to be million I'll show you how you can add million in just a second and then you can see for Germany as well we have the flag you have the excerpt and then Berlin being the capital of Germany 83.02 million people and then Russia of course uh, Moscow is the capital 144.4 million and so on okay so we've successfully been able to display all the information that we want for each and every one of our posts now it is time to do some custom cleanup we need to clean up our page because quite frankly this looks uh <laughs> really really bad right so the first thing I'm going to do right now is to add or create some sort of container for our posts. Let me go over to the home page right here. Now, keep in mind, we're working with the 2021 theme. So if you're working with a different theme, it might be a little bit different, the styling. But here, you can see how it is laid out, right? You have the title, you have the featured image, and then you have the accept. But you can see that the information, our content area, seems to be in a particular container that has equal margins from the left and right. Our current page, there are no containers, there are no borders, there are no margins. You can see all the data is stuck right up next to the left border right here and then the right border there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow a class from the 2021 theme and that class is called the entry dash content like right here let me go back in here if i was to inspect with my browser let me bring this in here right here let me show you the actual class i'm talking about it's the one right here you see where it says div class equals entry dash content right here this is the class that's able to put this content inside of a container. So what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to borrow that class. And here's exactly what I'm going to do. Let's bring this back in here. And right up here, just before the very first loop, I'm going to open up our div. And I will say class equals. And then I'm simply going to say entry dash content. Okay, let's close the div. And then of course, down here at the very bottom, we will close the div properly. Div. And there you go. I'm going to go ahead now to save this. And let's see what we have. Let's go back to our articles page. Let's do a hard refresh. And okay, so even though the featured image is still occupying the full width of its container, you can at least see right now that the excerpt area is now centralized. So we're starting to improve on the design. What I'm going to do right now is to add one more class. Okay. And check this out. This class is going to be for a div that's going to occupy each of our posts. What am I talking about? Take a look at this. All right. Right here, there it says while loop have post and so on. I am going to introduce a div that will hold this information for our posts and also another div that will hold all this information for our countries. Check this out. I'm going to go back in here and now I am going to close the PHP code right here because 
I want to introduce HTML code. So you can see right now I've closed this PHP code right here. That's why now you can see that this remaining PHP code is now in black, meaning that it will not run. But what I'm going to do is I am simply going to open up a div, HTML div. I'm going to call this one class equals and then give it a class of post dash content. Okay. Now I'm going to tap this one and then down here, I am going to close the div for HTML, but then we need to open up PHP code again so that this would work and all these would work as well. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and open up the PHP code, PHP, and then after the excerpt, we'll go ahead now and close that PHP code. So now we've closed this block of PHP code. And I'm just going to go ahead now and open up new PHP code again for this remaining uh, content right here. Okay, let's go ahead now and save this. So this class right now, post content, is going to work wonders for the page. And I'm going to show you exactly how. Let's refresh the page. And now you can see our posts. The featured image, the title, the accept are all now being centralized because of this class that we added called post dash content. All right. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the countries right now. So down here, let's do the exact same thing. I'm going to close this PHP code and then open up our div class equals post uh, dash content. And then we'll open up the PHP code, PHP, display all of this. And then down here, we can close the PHP code. We can close our div as well. And then finally open up the new PHP code as well for the remaining of our content, of our code. I'm going to go ahead now, save this. And of course, let's go ahead now and refresh our page one more time. And okay, the posts are still fine. And now you can see the countries have also now been centralized at the center. You can see we've got Spain, we've got the capital right there, we've got the population. And for Germany, Russia, Argentina, Colombia, and there it is. So this still isn't finished. I mean, obviously, you, you'd want to make a few more changes, like add some spacing, make the link right here, the titles clickable. And then also for the countries as well, you can see you probably want to have Spain on its own separate line. And then you want to separate the capitals from the population. And we're supposed to even add million at the end of the numbers for the population as well. So all of these things still need to be fixed. However, please check out part two of this video. I'm going to make it another video where we'll cover more HTML, more CSS to make our page look a lot more presentable. So you can look out for that particular uh, tutorial. But so far, so good. We've actually come to the end of today's tutorial where I have shown you extensively how to work with the WordPress loop. I have shown you how you can display your posts, a uh, number of posts, the status of the posts. I've also shown you how you can display using the WordPress loop your custom post types, your custom taxonomies, and also to use the loop to display custom fields as well. Well, there you have it. We've come to the end of today's tutorial where I've shown you how to build this custom page using the WordPress loop. And I sincerely hope that you've now learned how to customize and work with the WordPress loop to display any kind of content that you want on your page, regardless of whether you're working with the WordPress post or you're working with WordPress uh, custom post types. Like I said in the intro, today's video is just part one of a two part series in the next video, which I'll upload either tomorrow or the day after, we're going to take this existing page right now as it is, and we're going to modify it to make it more presentable. What am I talking about? We're going to make the content area a bit wider. We're going to have each post and each country actually be uh, side by side. So we'll have three uh, posts on one line. And then in the second section, we'll have three countries as well. And then I'm also going to show you how you can make the titles of each post and each country clickable so that when somebody clicks on the title, 
it will take them to the actual page for that post or country. I'm going to show you how you can incorporate HTML tags like the H1s, H2 with your PHP code, add some CSS just to make this page look a lot more presentable as it is. I don't want to cover all of that in today's tutorial because this tutorial would have become way too long. So if you enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up. Share this video with anyone who may feel my benefit and if you've been watching my videos and you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe, hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new tutorial and if you have any questions about anything we covered today, please do let me know in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them as soon as I can. My name is Alex, it's been a pleasure. I will see you in part two of today's video.